Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 21. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Excel 2010, Chapter 2, click on the link below the video. Hey, I'm on the sheet PTCT, which is Pivot Table for uh, Cross Tabulation 1. And in this video, we're going to learn how to do cross tabulation. Now, back in Chapter 00 in our introduction to Excel, we actually did saw the amazing power of pivot tables to do cross tabulation. And cross tabulation is just a fancy way of saying, hey, I want to count uh, given two criteria. So for example, the age group 35 to 44, that's age, that's a, a quantitative variable, number variable. We want to find out how many of those people in that group bought conducted their transaction with MasterCard, right? So nine. How many people with PayPal? 10. So the age group 25 to 34, PayPal, that's the payment method. There were 19 transactions from our sample of 20 in that age group that um, bought with this payment method. This is a categorical ca uh, data point, and this is a quantitative or numeric data point. We'll also see how to do in this video uh, cross tabulation for two categorical. Here's region and boom and count. We'll also see how to do column percentage totals and row percentage totals. All right, let's go to cross tab, uh, C cross tab sheet, and here's our data set. So again, we're going from a bunch of messy data and summarizing it in some useful way. In our case, we're doing cross tabulation. Pivot tables. Insert, pivot table, pivot table, or we use the keyboard shortcut. Remember, only one cell selected, Alt-NVT, Alt-NVT. Now, this is all correct. I want it on a new sheet, so I'm going to hit Enter. We're going to take age, drop it down to row labels. I'm going to come over here, right click, group. We, in earlier videos, saw how to calculate a starting point, an ending point, and an increment. So we, for our age, have 15. 65 for our pivot table is fine. And uh, our increment is going to be 10, so 10 years. Now, we also saw in earlier videos that pivot tables create different labels if they're integers or decimal numbers. These are integers, so our labels will be like this. Click OK. 15 up to 24, 25 up to 34. So it looks like there's a gap there, right? Could that a gap between 24 and 25, but because of these are integers, there are no gaps. All right, now let's click here to bring back our field list. If your field list doesn't appear, then you'll right click show field list. And we want to do our second uh, variable, payment method. I'm going to drag it to column. So now we see that. And then we can drag any one of these fields to the values area down here. And the reason why is because any one of them, you can ask the question, since we're counting, which one is PayPal and in this age group? I'm going to choose to drag payment method. And so there we have it. Let's fix this, our row labels. That is not a good, let me. I'm actually going to close this. And then uh, if we need it, we'll bring it back later. I'm going to go up to Design, Report Layout, and Tabular. We've seen that, I don't know, maybe five times in this class so far. We want to see the actual variable or field names. I'm going to highlight these columns here like that. I'm using my cursor like that. Click and drag. And I want to double click and best fit all the columns. So I'm going to double click like that. This one's kind of big here, American Express. I'm going to shorten this. I'm going to type there and type A space E. Oh, the payment method is, uh, so I'm going to uh, edit this and call it pay method. I can also shorten this. Uh, uh, customer age is fine for us right there. Now, uh, let's do a little bit of formatting. Just quickly here, maybe something like that. Ooh, yuck. As we mentioned before, there's not many good built-in formattings 
form format structures here. All right, so that one. Now, that's great. We can clearly see um, data cross-tabulated. And we can see it looks like up in the younger ages, as we expect, right, PayPal is uh, ha ha the most transactions for young people are done with PayPal, or the most PayPal transactions are done by young people. We could see some other patterns here. One important thing to notice about a cross tabulation is this right here is an actual frequency distribution for these categories. And these right here are the frequent is a frequency distribution for our payment methods. So on the outside edges, frequency distribution, frequency distribution. And then the inside shows the cross tabulation. Now let's make a chart. Excel has absolutely awesome charts for cross tabulation. I'm going to go to insert. And by the way, you could do this a few ways. Uh, the design for pivot, sorry, options for pivot table tools. There's pivot charts there. Insert. If you're doing a default chart column, you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt F1. Wow, check that out. That was um, easy. Now, we can actually filter here. And we haven't done this in this class so far because we already set up our pivot table. But you can actually filter here from the chart, it will actually change the underlying pivot tables. I'm going to right click this and so say hide all field buttons. I'm going to um, click on this and control one. I'm going to see what it looks like at the top. Okay, so that's that's all right. Uh, we have our category. I want to add a label here. I'm going to go to this is an axis horizontal. I'm going to click up here and type uh, age in years, and then enter. Maybe we, uh, yeah, let's keep those lines. I don't want a, a number of other videos we showed the the actual frequency counts up at the top. I don't particularly want to do that there because it will get pretty messy. So I'm going to keep the axis there. We might put uh, frequency over here. So I'm going to go up to axis, vertical. type frequency. All right, now that is one type of chart. And that's a pretty good chart. That's the default. Let's look at one other one. And I'm actually going to do a little trick here. I'm going to copy this chart. We actually saw this in back in chapter 00. I click on the outside edge, control C. I'm going to click right here and control V. And now I'm going to change the chart type, design, change chart type. And we've only been sticking with columns, but there's a great option here, stack column. I'm not a big fan of this one because it's like a pie chart in a column, and it sometimes can be very confusing. But the beauty of stacked column here is it will show you the total. So our category is 15 to 24. It'll actually show us the total number of transactions for that category or that uh, class. And it will have the individual pieces that make up that total. So let's try this. Click OK. Now we can see with this chart, we actually can see the total for each individual class here. Now, if you look over at this chart, this chart's great. It shows us the two variables and uh, information about each one. As we look through each age group, we can clearly see PayPal is the largest in this age group right here. Whereas when we look at this chart, not only we can see the purples, we can see this one's the biggest, but we can also see the total for this group here. You cannot, it's very hard to tell what the total is with this chart. So this chart, you kind of get two and one, the actual total count for each class and the individual pieces for our second variable. Now, we could. Uh, this is a uh, histogram proper, right? And we could uh, remove the gap width. But the chart would be really busy, too busy. And we saw in our data analysis tool pack add in our histogram there. We didn't have, we had gaps here. So it's OK in this case. We have chosen to, to leave the gap width so the chart is not so busy. All right, so we did cross tabulation and two charts. Let's go over and do another one. 
Now we want to remind ourselves we're going to do this cross tabulation. Boom and region. Just count how many each one of the booms were bought in uh, the boomerang products were bought in each region. I click in one cell, Alt NVT, and I'm going to hit Enter. Now I can already see I've uh, done something silly here. I want to click on this sheet to double click it, and we'll call it PT space cross tabulation CT1. And then here I'll double click this sheet 3 and call it PT space cross tabulation 2. All right, so are you ready? We're going to do region. Actually, region will be the column. We'll do the product, the boom, row labels. And then it doesn't matter which one you drop here, but I'm going to drop a region. And so there we get our count. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to immediately go up to design show tabular and uh, we could do some format if we wanted to. Now I'm going to emphasize here is the cross tabulation. In fact I'm going to add some color here. It's usually not a good idea to add color from this section because when you pivot, pivot the table the formatting isn't always retained uh, the way you want. But I want to uh, note Bellin in the south were two. We can see Carlota, the most sold, was in the west. So we can see for each variable, column header, row header, right? We can see Midwest, Yanaki, the actual count. So we can see that cross tabulation. But notice that this right here, again, we mentioned this in our uh, last cro cross tabulation, that's the frequency distribution for that. And this is the frequency distribution for that. Because So it's kind of nice that way. You get like three charts in one. Now, let's go ahead. And I want to redo this, except for, actually, I'm going to control Z, Z, get rid of that. I'm going to copy this and paste it again down here. You mean you can copy and paste a pivot table? Sure you can. So I'm going to come down here and control V. And now I want to change the calculation here. I want to show this whole column that each one of the boomerangs as a percentage of the east total. So that means we want percentage of column total. So anywhere in this, I'm going to right click, show values as, and I'm going to go up to percent of column total. Wow, instantaneous. I mean, that's like a one second, two second right click. That would be hard to do with formulas right there. But there you go, with a pivot table, it is easy. Now we can clearly see within the east, right? The, wow, it looks like exactly Aspen and Carlota sold, uh, were the products sold the most within the east. Oh no, I'm sorry, Yanaki. So Yanaki was the largest one. We can see over here, wow, within the south, remember the south total wasn't very big, but wow, a lot of Yanaki sold within the south. Now, this also, this is a frequent uh, percent frequency distribution based on the booms, right? So 29% of all boomerangs sold were Yanaki, all right? Now let's do this once again. That was percent of column total. Let's do percent of row total. So I click in one cell, right click. So I copied, pasted, and now I'm going to uh, show values as percent of row total. And so now, within each boomerang product, we can see what percentage of the Aspens were sold in each region. So Aspen sold most in the west. Bellin, uh, oh, is in the west. Looks like it's a clean sweep here, west. Uh, that makes sense because the West had so many more. Oh, no, close. The Midwest and the the West, close for sunset. And uh, so the West wins every time. But you can see for each category, product sold, where each were the most were sold by region. All right, so that is cross-tabulation. 
We did cross tabulation with two categorical variables. Straight cross tabulation, this one is with column percent, this one with row percent. And we also had a, saw how to do group um, quantitative variable, categorical variable, and cross tabulation, and then make some charts. All right, we'll see you next video.